Yeah, I'm um, really excited. My family and I be part of the Ole Miss family. Um, when this opportunity came up and Coach Luke called me, I thought this is – I didn't know Matt. I knew um, some guys on the staff, some guys that he had worked with, Coach Cutcliffe and others. And uh, after just two minutes of conversation with Coach Luke, I'm like, I've got to uh, look into this further and, re and, and uh, have an opportunity to talk to him about it. And it worked out great. I'm tickled to death just in a few days I've been here, the feel I get from the community, uh, from the staff, from the athletic department, it's just um, a great opportunity for me. I'm happy to be back on the grass, so to speak, uh, working again, coaching ball and, and working with the young men. I've met some of them. Some of them are back early. I'm, I'll meet all of them here in a couple of weeks, but um, uh, it's, it's good to be back coaching again. It's been a long year or so and um, I'm not ready to retire and um, hopefully I can bring some uh, some success to the program or aid in that anyway but I'm really excited the direction of the program where it's going um, and where we're going to be in the future so with that fire away yes Rich you've been a head coach for like since like what 2001 or so what will it be like to to yeah. go back being a coordinator in, yeah. in your opinion yeah longer than that most of my career i've been blessed to be able to be a head coach. i was a head coach um i was i was to a brag but i was the youngest college head coach in the country at the age of 24 at salem college and youngest fired at 25 when, when they dropped football the following year and and then I was a head coach for seven years at Glenville State. But when I was an assistant for four years with Tommy Bowden at Tulane and Clemson, I I really enjoyed it. It was some of the most enjoyable time of my life. But I think, you know, as a maybe as a head coach, I can help uh, Matt or the program and in, in giving a world view of, of everything. I'm sure as, as Coach McIntyre can as well. But I have a role, and my role is to to serve this program and coach Luke as well as I can and and because of the respect I have for Matt and for for Ross and the department uh, I don't think that'll be difficult I'm and again being around the, the coaches I've been around just in a few days and gotten to know it's it's going to be a lot of fun Sorry. <coughs> Rich I, I know you've had an opportunity to kind of look at your personnel and look at what Ole Miss lost from last season on the offensive side of the football three starting offensive linemen, all those guys leaving early for the NFL. Have you had a chance to just kind of look at your overall personnel and kind of see how that might mesh with what your philosophy is going to be and what is that philosophy? Yeah, uh, I, I, I've done it a little bit. I didn't want to do too much to get depressed, you know, with the, some of those great players that are leaving. But there's a lot of really good players coming back. And I think it's also an opportunity for some guys that maybe hadn't played as much or young or guys that we're going to bring in to play as well. So I've watched some film, but I really haven't identified as many. And that's okay. I'm going to figure it out. We'll figure it out through spring. Uh, philosophically, scheme-wise, you know, I don't like to, even though it's a system, it's not, I don't like to fit it into just one kind of category. You know, we'll, you know, we'll, every coach will tell you this. I mean, we have to have a system and have answers that are built within a system. But at the same time, we have to be able to adapt to the skills of our players and not just the quarterback, even though that's a part of it. Uh, you know, I've had running quarterbacks, the guys that really ran well, but I've also had guys that were stronger throwing than running in the system as well. What we will do and figure out throughout spring ball and then evaluating that and certainly going through fall camp is, okay, what do our guys do well? For, what fits their talents? and what we got to do to win games. And, uh, but it's not going to be a grab bag thing. It won't be like, oh, okay, let's pick this play from here and this play. It's, there's enough in the system, so to speak, that, that we can have answers to it more than anything. Is, but it always takes talented players that execute well. And our job is to get the talented players here, and there's already a lot of them here, and to help them execute well. So. It, it's a spread-based system, but whenever I said it's a spread run, if we're better throwing and that's what we got to do to win games, we'll, we'll feature that a lot. But we will try to run the ball as well and, and um, build the package behind that. And fortunately, I've been able to have both kinds of quarterbacks, both kinds of kind of skill players that, that have allowed us to build the package.
Rich, what is what is the last year away from coaching been like for you, and and just yeah. what did you learn about maybe what you missed or what you can take? Yeah, it, it's been a uh, oh, it's it's been a long um, year, uh, kind of a nightmare in a lot of ways. But uh, the thing that's been um, able for or me for, to be able to, I guess, keep the itch and and have some sense of sanity, and and some of that madness was. Uh, my kids. My daughter uh, graduated and she did, you know, she's doing, she's actually joining the dark side. She's going to be in the media. Now she, so she did some media stuff. She got a job working at a local TV station and watching her in front of the camera. Now she'll be behind the camera producing, doing that. And then obviously watching my son play at Arizona and watching the games, which was really, it was difficult because you have no control as a you're just sitting in the stands as a parent, and you can't call plays, and you can yell at the refs, but they don't listen to you anyway. And and so just sitting there watching him play at least kept my mind busy. Um, and it was I was more nervous just watching him as a dad than any time I was ever coaching. But proud of him and watched him play a little bit, started a game in the Rose Bowl against UCLA. And, and so that part – and then I visited. I tried not to just sit back. I went, okay, this is – an opportunity for me maybe to learn a little bit because everybody talks about experience like if you got oh I got 20 some years of experience well if you did the same thing for 20 years you got one year experience repeated 20 times so I've always tried to maybe learn a little bit try to evolve and so I tried to take some of the time this past 10 to 11 months and visited five or six other college programs a couple NFL programs and just see what they're doing, not just scheme-wise, but how the head coach operates and how the assistant coaches operate. And so I try to learn a little bit, too. Uh, and I, I think it'll be, you know, I think, no question, that it'll hopefully make me more appreciative, certainly, of the opportunities I have, but also smarter and able to, to bring more to a program. Hey, Coach, kind of a, a follow-up to that statement, you, Urban Meyer, kind of, the godfathers of the spread offense or introduce that lexicon into the general public. How, how has that offense evolved? And you talked about evolving as a coach. How has that offense evolved from maybe the 90s, early 2000s to today? And how have you changed as a spread coach? Yeah, it, it, really what I started doing was way back at the Glenville State days. And back then it was, it was a couple things were different. One, it was shotgun based. And then two, the, the, the tempo, you know, it was, you know, we were going to run a two minute drill the whole game. And, and just kind of a quick story, back when I first started at Glenville and I went there, the program had, I mean, most programs when you get a new head coach, there's usually a reason why, why, right? Well, we took over and they had got shut out seven or eight times a year before and, and uh, they scored 20 points the entire year, didn't win any games, so it's a perfect job to take, right? Because the expectations were real low. We get a standing ovation for a first down. But I thought, oh, what are we going to do? I mean, we're getting... You know, we're, you know, these guys have only scored 20 points the entire year of a year before. And I'm like, I was a defensive guy. And I said, okay, here, I'm a head coach. I'm going to go on the offensive side. And what's the hardest thing to defend or gives you the most problems as a defensive coach? And I know I'm going on a lecture here. But at the time, I thought, oh, I was always a two-minute drill. You ever watch a team, they don't do anything. They go in a two-minute drill and they go up and down the field. So I said, all right, we're going to run a two-minute drill the whole game. I mean, I mean, who cares? There's only 500 people who go to the game, and I'm related to 490 of them. So let's just go and, and do it. So I said, I can find me a quarterback. I can throw it around, get me some skill guys, and get five little uh, off, uh, five offensive linemen to get run over slowly, right? And so we put this in there, and it evolved into, you know, the zone read and, and some other stuff. And it really didn't get much attention probably until we went to Tulane and some of the games were on TV and then we did it at Clemson and West Virginia. So it's kind of evolved over the years, but the base has gone back 20 some years. And what's different is back then, going shotgun zone read and just throwing a bubble screen off of it was unique. Now it's, that's kind of old school and you're throwing RPOs and quick game off a of run, every run play you could have and it's evolved from college to now the NFL, so it gets more attention. But, you know, there's no patents on schemes. You know, nobody has all the answers. But at least for me, I'm comfortable with that world, that the world now is the NFL is starting to take place a little bit. So that, is, to me, is comfortable because that's all I've done for 20-some years. So you talked about 
obviously evolving the spread, <coughs> evolving the zone read, the RPO. That's all kind of commonplace in college and professional football now. What do you do to kind of keep things fresh, to keep coming up with new things? Well, you really just watch. You know, you watch. I've probably learned and watched and seen as much from high school programs throughout the country. In the NFL doing it now, that's, that's, that's fun to watch. And, but you'll sometimes watch, you know, high school coaches because they're the ones that are, have to be the most innovative because they got what they got. They can't go and recruit. So a lot of times they got to do more with less. They got to be creative in how they do things. And so I think you're constantly trying to learn. And sometimes it doesn't fit or sometimes you don't understand it. And so you, you can't put it in your offense. But if it's a little tweak or something right here that can help you, you know, move the ball, get points, you know, score, uh, win games, do whatever, then, then you can do it. So it's not really – I think sometimes as coaches we try to make things so complicated. And I always tell everybody it's checkers, not chess. You don't have to think five moves ahead, just one or two, and, and kind of build your offense from there. But at the end of the day, you've got to be able to play – you know, say run the ball. You've got to be able to play physical. The one thing that's always kind of we've taken pride on this pass is that even though we might be spread, even though we're in a shotgun, there's no such thing as finesse. You know, we, we would take that as a source of pride or um, uh, condemnation, if you will, if somebody said to tell, they're a finesse team. No, we're going to, you know, if you give us the right numbers and angles to run, we're going to try to run it. And if you beat us on that, we'll try something else. But you know, we, we're going to do what it takes to win games. So there might be some games where we throw it 60 times and some we throw it 30. I don't know. We'll see. Coach, just what, what you've seen off film and, and everything, could you comment <coughs> specifically about Matt Corral? Well, I can uh, – I remember him in high school. I can remember in high school. Been, he committed early to SE and then to Florida and whatever. So I, I remember him being a really good player and a guy I would love to recruit back then, a couple years ago, and I knew he had come here. And so when this opportunity came up, I told Matt, I said, I think, you know, you had, you've had really good quarterbacks here. And I said, I know you got a pretty good young one, too, on your team. So I was really excited to him. And one of the first guys, you know, it was the first player on the team that I reached out to because I knew of him a little bit, didn't know him, and talked to him a little bit and really excited to get to work with him. I think he's, you know, everybody talks about the right fit. I mean, if, you know, again, we can all different sh shapes and sizes of quarterbacks, but he's got the kind of skill set I think is going to be uh, perfect for what we want to do. Coach, over here. Oh. <laughs> um, Mike McIntyre, we asked him about you, so we're going to ask you about him. Yeah. Tremendous respect what he did. Uh, I've known about him. I've known him. And what he's done his career, I should say, even before he got to Colorado, but got to know him really well then. And as you know, you know guys from coaching, like what they do with their program, but also you get to know him as a person. And that was the one. Mike was one when Matt reached out, and you know, Mike reached out as well. And I thought, this is, you know, what a great thing for Matt to be able to get Coach McIntyre, tremendous football coach, great person, uh, good to be around, good staff guy. And so, and really sharp. And my, he, you know, he did some phenomenal things. As I was there already a year ahead of him in the Pac-12 and saw what he, where he took that program, where they were when we played Colorado, I think, my first year and where they were the next couple of years uh, when Mike was there. So tremendous respect for what he's done or did with that program, who he is as a person. And, again, going back to – to uh, Matt, he's going to get a reputation for hiring, you know, I don't know what's in the proper term of certain kind of coaches. Coaches living the buyout life, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but he's, uh, Matt, is, he's, he's got a great staff put together, and, and um, we're, not, we're not in here a, as a retirement kind of gig. You know, I'm, I'm as energized and as fired up as I did when I went to Glenville State way back when. And, and part of that reason is Matt, obviously, in his vision, but also, you know, what Mike's going to do on defense. This might be way too premature for you to even address, but there are some high-profile quarterbacks that are out there that are either in the transfer portal or about to get into it. Is that something you you think you might explore just because of – possible lack of depth here at that position? 
Yeah, the, the lack of depth is, is um, only a little bit of concern just because of experience. I, you know, we signed a couple really talented guys, and, you know, you got Matt. You know, but, you know, you, I don't think you've – any time you have a chance to help your program with the right guy, you at least look into it. I don't think whether any grad transfer you bring in should be any kind of indication on – anybody else at that position. In other words, you don't have, you're bringing this guy in because you don't have nobody else in it. That ain't the case. We got Matt. We got some really good young quarterbacks that we signed. Some are still going to be recruiting. But if there's a great one out there that wants to come and, and maybe it's the right fit and everybody understands the situation, I don't know if you ever say no to that at any position. I think quarterback gets the most attention. But I'm comfortable with what we have currently here and coming in, but uh, I think you always are looking to, you know, see what, what you can do to make us better or possibly make us better. And I always worry about the quarterback position because you have to be good there and you better be more than one deep and probably more than two deep. I, a couple years ago, I lost my top three guys quarterback to injuries. And so it was, you know, we wound up moving a guy from tight end to play quarterback and it was just, it was, it was a tough deal. It cost us, but you know, we'll we're, we'll plan on that. You know, going into the future. Going off that, you've talked about having a lot of different kinds of quarterbacks through your career. Is there a common trait or thread that you look for when you're developing or recruiting a quarterback, or is it all kind of just you like? Yeah, that's a talent? good question. I think you know, it's um, sounds like coach speaking. Everybody wants guys that can run and throw, and you know, to me. You, know, you can be better in one aspect of that than the other. You know, you don't have to be the fastest runner, but you have to be a willing runner. We're not going to run him a bunch, and you know, depend on what he does, you know, well and how they're playing us. But the certain traits of being competitive, love football, um, being able to execute certain plays, whether it's run or throw, all that, the probably, you know, everybody wants in a quarterback. You don't want a guy, you don't want to recruit or have a quarterback that likes football. You better have one that loves it and needs it because that's a position where you have to spend so much of your own free time and getting to know not just what you're doing but what other people are doing against you. A guy that just likes it, it's kind of a hobby, won't have nearly the success as somebody that loves it and needs it and is absorbed by all the stuff. And so that's always a trait you're kind of, kind of looking for. And I've been blessed to have – Guys, and the competitiveness, you know, I want a guy that's, now I know Matt's not that way uh, pretty well, but you want a guy that loves to compete all the time, not just on Saturdays. And also, uh, Mike was telling us just a few minutes ago about the last time you guys played against each other. What yeah, I'm do, glad he brought that up. Yeah, what what do you surprised. remember about that game? We, we were actually watching uh, some cut-ups today with the offensive staff, and when the Colorado cut-ups came in, I yelled for Mike. I didn't see him. He stayed down the hallway. I wanted him to come down the room, but no, that was a that was this is how smart I was that I didn't start that guy earlier and he runs for 320, whatever it is, what game. And that's Mike. He probably told you that the first thing you said after the game, you know, coaches, what do you do? What do you say to each other after a game? You know, hello, good luck, say hi to the family. And so we said that hello, good luck, and hi to the family. And he's like, oh, how smart are you? Where's this guy been? You know, <laughs> I've been saving him just for you, Mike. No, but uh, yeah, that was the that was kind of a unique deal. Fun, coach. You talked about taking a little tour, seeing a few different programs, a few different NFL cities. What? Where did you go? What were some of the major things that you learned? Oh, I over probably that tour? shouldn't say. Um, I won't say the college teams because then it gives. Now we got to play them, so I don't want to give them any credit. But uh, went to the Falcons because you know, I was in Georgia a little bit, uh, had some time there. So I went up and spent some time with the Falcons. And then Mark Helf, which is a buddy of mine, the offense coordinator at the Bears. And they're doing a lot of, you know, I guess, so-called college schemes. And so uh, went, went to visit with the Bears. And, and then there was four or five college teams that are really good programs. I'm talking about playoff, championship, conference title type of teams. I have friends at that I went to go uh, spend some time with. And that was just literally just being a fly on a wall, you know, just sitting back here watching, whether it's watching practice or watching meetings and then just watching how the whole 
thing come together because, you know, being a head coach, you want to make sure you evolve too. Assistant coaches do it all the time, but, but uh, sometimes head coaches don't, and I've always wanted to – I always kind of thought, you know, when I was a head coach for most of the years, we would take visits or have people come in and visit us to try to learn and see what they're doing. But, you know, we can make it too complicated at times, but more than anything else, just, you know, just studying recruiting, how people do in recruiting, how people run their off-season strength program, how they, you know, prepare practice or do things in practice, all that stuff. Coach, I was talking to Ryan Stanchek earlier in the week, and he said a lot of what you do running the ball is based on reads and how much the quarterback can handle. How do you gauge how much to put on his plate from a reads perspective at what, any given time? Yeah, there's some that he – it's, it's kind of non-negotiable that he has to know and be able to read, but some of it too is, you know, again, um, you know, you can – it's not what you know, it's what your players can execute, right? And uh, that, that part of it too goes down to um, determining that through practice and – you know, your experience of your quarterback. The, the biggest thing with, is, is not just with him, but you can only put as much offense in as your least experienced or least knowledgeable offensive starter can handle. So even your quarterback will handle everything, but your left tackle or your running back can't handle that, then you can't put it in. So you have to go through that. And that's why we're not, you know, we try to appear more complicated than we are. And I know the system here, part of the beauty that they've done the last few years here is they've, they've put up a lot of points and did some great things and weren't overly complicated. And we have to be just looking, again, without diving into the whole details, you know, I think there's going to be a third or maybe close to a third of the roster is going to be freshmen or redshirt freshmen. So there's going to be a lot of young guys that are going to have to play. And so part of what we have to do is be freshmen or rookie friendly and have the guys be able to, because I don't want the talented guys that can help us win standing on the sidelines or in sweats, sweatsuits being redshirted. You know, it's our job to be able to help them learn and be able to play. Coach, over here. This is your, uh, I think, first, first round through the SEC. What's your impression of this conference? Well, I haven't played, well, yeah, I've never coached in the SEC, have played. A few teams, you know, played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, played that other school in a couple games, a home-and-home -home series and a bowl game, I think. You know who that is. Um, I don't know what that, but I, you know, just looking from a view, there's no question the, the, the talent, the coaching, the commitment to football, I think that's a big thing, the commitment to football. And football programs in, in this league, in our league, is second to none. And so it's going, to be, it's going to be a fun challenge. And there's some really good teams. We're in the best division in football, in college football, without question. I think that's probably not even up to, for debate. So that's, that's part of the, uh, the challenge and part of the thing. We'll be doing a lot of study. I've watched them, and I've watched some on film throughout the years and all that, but I'll be diving into it pretty deep this summer. Hey. You were talking about Matt Corral. Did you actually see him in person play in high school? No, no. just on film. Yeah, just I didn't see him in person. He was probably committed to SC by then, but yeah, just in person. And I haven't, I've never, like I said, I still haven't seen him in person. I think he comes back here in a couple weeks or so. But. We'll be working. I'll be on the road probably. But when we're out to start working with them and meeting with them, you know, it'll be a slower process. And either I'll have it all down by the end of spring, but by the end of fall camp, we will in August. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks, guys.